Spring is in the air. And you know what that means. Cute baby animals are trying to find their way into the world. And some babies are definitely cuter than others. Birds, for example, tend to become cuter as they get older and grow into their feathers. Baby birds grow quickly. Most leave the nest within two or three months. They go through a few stages of growth before they are ready to strike out on their own. So, how do baby birds leave the nest? I've been thinking of how to leave you. Let's take a close look at baby birds to learn how they grow and how humans can help along the way. When birds first hatch, they are called hatchlings. You know, ornithologists aren't always the most creative when it comes to naming things in the bird world. Hatchlings are usually naked and don't have their eyes open. They are pretty helpless and rely on mom to keep them warm until their feathers grow in. If you see that a hatchling has fallen out of a nest in your yard, you can simply pick up the baby and put it back in the nest. It is a myth that the parents will reject the babies if they smell humans on them. In fact, most birds can't smell at all. Birds are excellent parents and will still take care of the baby after you help it back into the nest. As the hatchlings start to grow feathers and get bigger, they move into the nestling stage, where they stay in the nest so they can keep growing. I know, not much creativity going towards naming these guys either. You can tell a nestling from a hatchling because they look a little less like aliens and a little more like birds. Nestlings rely on their parents to feed them and protect them from predators. If you see a baby bird on the ground that has mostly fluffy feathers and can't move around all that well, you can pick that baby up and put it back in the nest. As baby birds get bigger and lose their downy fluff, they start branching and exploring areas outside of the nest. They jump out, they're actually called branchers. So they sit out, they come out of the nest, they sit on the branches, and sometimes they fall down or a wind comes along and knocks them out, or something happens, maybe sibling rivalry, not that they would have it. <laughs> anyway, they end up on the ground, and most of the time they're healthy, they're fine. It's amazing. I um, mean, they fall down, you know, 50 feet from a wow. tree, oh, wow. and they land, and there's nothing wrong with them. That's pretty wild. At this stage, the bird is called a fledgling. Fledglings still rely on their parents to bring them food as they learn what their wings are meant to do, fly. Flying takes practice and involves a lot of falling before they're actually able to stay in the air. Fledglings will also start watching their parents to learn different foraging and hunting techniques. During this phase, the best thing humans can do is give the birds space as they learn all about the world around them. And fear not, the parents of the birds are around to watch over them as the babies explore and learn. Barred owl fledglings can even climb back up into the nest all by themselves. It also helps if humans can keep their pets away from the nesting site until the fledglings have mastered the art of flying. Just remember, bird parents are the best parents for their babies. If you find a hatchling or a nestling, the best thing you can do is put it back in the nest. Baby birds start learning from their parents at a young age on how to act like a bird. They need to learn how to communicate with other birds, find food, and look out for signs of predators. If you find a baby bird that you think is sick or injured, the best thing you can do is call a rehab facility near you. Now sometimes the nests fall out of trees completely, either by wind or storms, and you don't need to fret, it's just fine. You can build your very own nests to replace the old nests. So if you have a robin's nest in a tree and it falls out and the baby birds are still okay, what you can do is make your nest uh, using household items. Cool Whip containers or other plastic containers do make wonderful nests for songbirds. All you have to do is poke a couple holes in the bottom and safely attach that to um, the branch or the tree that that original nest was on. Wicker baskets are also great for songbirds. If you have one big enough, they might be good for raptors as well. And if you do have a raptor nest that has fallen out of a tree in your yard, all you need to do is use a laundry basket 
And again, if you put it in that same branch, in that same tree, uh, the parents will come back and take care of those babies. Uh, when you're working with raptors, just watch the feet. <laughs> the feet are very strong, even as babies. So just safely pick up the birds and you can put them back in the nest where they belong. And the parents can take care of them to make sure that these guys grow up to be healthy, strong birds. As spring approaches, keep an eye out for baby animals as they learn all about the wild world that we call home. Young animals not only have to learn how to survive in the natural world, but also how to coexist with humans. Be sure to give baby animals space and be extra aware while driving as they are out learning and exploring. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the Raptor Center channel. And be sure to join us next week for more avian adventures.